so hello friends i hope you all are fine so let's start today's topic and the name of the topic is the compensators okay so this is the <coughs> topic of control systems and uh, uh, in that we are going to cover the entire compensator in this uh, video and it's very easy topic okay it's very easy topic and uh, yeah i'm going to discuss all the important formulas and at the end of this uh, video i will be providing questions which you can try like try yourself questions at the end okay yeah so let's start the compensator as we all know that uh, after the prolonged use of a system the system parameter can change and the output of the system uh, may start deviating from the desired value or desired output so in order to get the desired uh, specification from the system we need to introduce some device to improve the performance and such device is known as the compensator okay so the by means of this uh, compensator we can just adjust the forward path gain or a feedback gain uh, just by inserting the compensator in the either in the cascading mode or in feedback mode like various schemes can be used for the compensators so as i have written over here like you can go for the cascade compensation and feedback compensation i'll elaborate these two points in the coming uh, session like coming video so yeah let's see the definition first uh, the compensator are used to improve the performance like the transient performance and the steady state like the overall performance you can say overall this transient plus steady state means overall performance uh, characteristic during the runtime like when we are operating our system operating our system so during that time we want we want to improve its performance improving performance means we need our desired value desired output you can say okay so in that, in that case we use um, compensators and uh, yeah generally there are three type of compensators like the first one is phase lead compensation uh, compensator phase lag compensator and you can say phase lead lag or lag lead compensation over here this is uh, the entire one thing like you will understand these two uh, lead lag and lag lead compensation concept very uh, easily uh, when i uh, tell you in the upcoming video okay so let me give you the overview of the various compensation techniques or schemes which we use uh, for the system as uh, as it is written over here cascade compensation so in cascaded compensation there is nothing but uh, the structure with, uh, with the structure itself i am saying like this is your compensator block diagram then you have plant transfer function and uh, this is given with a negative feedback over here like this this is the negative feedback so here this this is known as the cascading scheme like the compensator is cascaded with the plant transfer function this is the compensator transfer function is cascaded with the plant transfer function so you call you can call it as a uh, cascade compensation in case of feedback compensation the compensator is uh, in the feedback path here you have a plant transfer function g and here you have uh, the feedback path gain h like this and here you will be having the compensator block gc and then it is given to the negative feedback over here so like this here the compensation is in the feedback path feedback path so this scheme is known as the feedback compensation scheme so these two points i have uh, made very clear like what is the cascade compensation and what is the feedback compensation okay so let's move on to the types of compensators so first one is phase lead compensation second one is phase lag compensation and third one is phase lead lag or lag lead compensation okay so the next important point is the transfer function of the compensator like there is a single transfer function for all the compensation or all the compensators so the transfer function is gc like c stands for the compensator so it is s plus z divided by s plus p here it is zero location and this is the pole location here the important parameter is alpha with the help of alpha itself we can conclude whether this is a lead compensator or lag compensator by looking at the transfer function so generally the compensation compensator is having a single zero and a single pole um, located so we can 
uh, just say like a single pole or a single zero in all the like in phase lead and phase lag compensation and here alpha is the determining factor whether alpha is greater than one or less than one so like this okay so z by p is known as alpha if alpha is greater than uh, one we can say it is a lag compensation and when alpha is less than one we can say it is a lead compensation okay so as this transfer function is very clear to all of you so the next is the root locus and the board plot of all compensator so first take about the lead compensator as you all know like z by p is equals to alpha if uh, alpha is less than one means the value of z is less than value of p okay so in that case z will be more closer to the j omega axis so this is the location of the zero and this is the location of the pole okay so when you consider when you move from this point towards infinity minus infinity over here you will get first zero over here so if you get zero you will get the positive slope with plus 20 db per decade okay and the next uh, again at this particular point you will receive this pole so from 20 it becomes zero zero db per decade this is our db per decade okay so this is the board plot of the lead compensator like you have to move in this direction particularly in this direction and you have to see first pole is coming means the uh, first zero is coming means there will be a positive slope and uh, uh, later on uh, pole is coming so there will be the negative slope like the combination of the slope will be like plus 20 minus 20 will become zero here zero plus 20 it will become 20 like this so these all are the concept of body plot so uh, i'll make a separate video for the board plot and you will be once after watching the body plot video you will be it will be very easy for you to understand this particular okay so by looking this uh, uh, this wave uh, this uh, border plot you can say like the lower frequency are uh, just uh, uh, stopped by this particular over here like till here the lower frequency are stopped and it is only allowing the higher frequency like if you plot this is the frequency axis omega so only higher frequency are allowed so this particularly this lead compensator is known as a high pass filter here the filtering action is a high pass filter action okay Similarly, when you compare with the lag compensation, as you know, in lag compensation, uh, the value of Z will be more than the value of P. Okay, how you are getting just by the alpha value, like alpha is greater than one. This implies that Z by P greater than one. This implies that Z is greater than P. Like these alpha values, you must remember for both lead and lag compensation. Okay, this is the important point over here. So when you see the root locus, the pole will be closer to the j omega axis and when you move in this direction first there will be a pole so first over here we are getting pole so it will add minus 20 db per decade and uh, once after the pole you will encounter with zero and it is adding plus 20 db so plus 20 minus 20 will become zero so this is the board plot over here and when you uh, plot it against the omega axis so it is just allowing up to the lower frequency reason and for the high frequency it is not allowing so here it is allowing here it is not allowing so this is practically or functionally you can say it is a low pass filter okay yeah moving on to the next part which is the lead lag compensation so uh, uh, the convention over here says the first part is lead and the second part is lag over here this is the first part and this is the second part so first part is lead compensation means the z1 by p1 the alpha 1 is less than 1 over here so you can say like this and for the second part it is lag so z by z2 by p2 is greater than 1 means alpha greater than 1 alpha 2 so uh, such type of transfer function you can say it is a lead lag compensator and uh, uh, simultaneously if you talk about lag lead compensation so the first part is uh, lag part and the second part over here is the lead part okay so for the lag part you have uh, alpha 1 greater than 1 and for the lead part you have alpha 2 less than 1 so easily you can find out the poles and zeros location over the uh, as plane okay so when you observe the root locus of the lead lag compensator uh, p1 by z1 so you can easily calculate from here is like z1 is less than p1 so here z1 and p1 and in that case your p2 is uh, your z2 sorry your z2 is greater than uh, your p2 like this so here it will be like these two parameters you can easily get like these two location 
So this is the root locus of this uh, lead lag compensation. And similarly, for the lag lead compensation, with these inequalities, you can easily find the uh, location of the poles and zero of the lead lag compensation or lag lead compensation. Okay. Now, let's look on the board plot. Uh, when you move in this particular direction over omega frequency, like moving in this particular direction, the first you are encountering with the zero over this location. So this zero is adding plus 20 dB per decade. And after that, there is a pole. So plus 20 will become plus 20 minus 20 will become zero. And again, you have a pole over here. So it will add the minus 20. So it is minus 20 dB per decade. And over here, you are encountering with zero. So minus 20 will become minus 20 plus 20 will become zero. Okay. So when you observe it, observe it with the omega frequency axis, here only the frequency range from omega 1 to omega 2 is allowed. Like the band of frequency is allowed over here. So this is functionally a band pass filter. Functionally you can say it is a band pass filter. And uh, over here when you observe it, so first it is from here to here if you move first there is a pole so minus 20 dB per decade you are getting over here. And then you are encountering with uh, 0 over here so it is making it to 0. Again, you are encountering with uh, 0, so it is making it to the plus, and again, you are encountering it here with the pole, so it is making 0. So, over here, omega 1 and omega 2, like the range of this particular band, the you are getting the gain is 0, so only this particular band of the frequency has been stopped, so this is band stop filter. Functionally, it is a band stop filter. So, these points are very crucial, and you can get a question from these points itself, like whether lead compensation is what which type of filter practically or functionally which type of filter is the lead compensation lead compensator or lag compensator okay so these points i have explained very clearly so let's move on to the next part here i am going to discuss the important formula and statement for the uh, compensators so as you all know this is the particularly transfer function of the given compensator like any compensator can be expressed in this form now we have to convert it into the time constant form okay here itself i am making you to understand like what is the time constant form here the time constant form says whatever is the quantity uh, the coefficient of s must be no, uh, not equals to uh, like you can say s plus one any quantity with plus one any quantity with plus one and there is any coefficient of s plus with one we want one over here so in that case it is a time constant form okay so when you convert the uh, transfer function of the compensator in the time constant form you will get over here like this so gc will be alpha ts plus 1 divided by alpha ts plus 1 over here <coughs> uh, you can assume that z by p is equals to alpha like z by p over here it is alpha so i have written this alpha over here and 1 by z is nothing but the t like over here you can see 1 by z is nothing but the t so and one uh, with these two relation you can easily find like the alpha is equals to 1 upon tp so p is nothing but 1 upon alpha t so 1 upon p is nothing but the alpha t so alpha t over here this 1 upon t means alpha t plus 1 so with this transfer function you have to convert it into this transfer function so you have to remember this like for the, the compensator in time constant form it is nothing but ts plus 1 divided by alpha ts plus 1 you can ignore this alpha because this is nothing but the uh, dc gain only so uh, while observing the transfer function you have to uh, focus on this particular alpha which is in the denominator so this alpha is going to determine whether the system is uh, when the transfer function is of lead compensation or whether the transfer function is of lag compensator okay so this denominator alpha is very important and uh, this only we have to consider this alpha we should not consider this is nothing but the uh, dc gain just the dc gain over here okay um, this example makes you clear uh, with by looking at this example you can say alpha is 10 uh, so alpha equals to 10 but this is wrong the alpha is not equals to 10 and alpha is not uh, actually greater than 1 over here in this case. So you cannot say it is um, which type of compensator I have said for the alpha greater than 1. You can say uh, alpha greater than 1 means lag compensation. Okay. So when you, when you actually solve this, so this will become uh, what for s plus 1 divided by 2s plus 1. Here the alpha t equals to 2 and uh, t equals to what or oh, here it is 4 so alpha into 4 equals to 2 so alpha is equals to 1 by 2 so when alpha is less than 1 which compensation do you have you have a lead compensator over here so by looking at this you cannot say it is a lag compensator actually it is a lead compensator okay like this you have to uh, focus on the points which are very important for the concluding the 
uh, answer from the transfer function itself whether it is a leak compensation or a lag compensation for that you have to see the denominator alpha and over here you only have to consider it in the time constant form and this t is the value which you have to completely substitute over here in the alpha t and just calculate the alpha value okay here i want to uh, have an analysis based on the transfer function of the compensator okay so omega c z like um, this is a corner frequency for the zero so it is 1 by t which is equals to z and uh, this is the corner frequency of the pole like this is the corner frequency for the zero so 1 by alpha t which is equals to the p okay <clears throat> So when you calculate the magnitude of this particular transfer function, you will find this m equals to root of omega square t square plus 1 divided by alpha square t square omega. Like for example, if you have uh, s plus 1, some quantity and you want to find its magnitude, it is nothing but root of the coefficient of s1 square plus the another term square. Like s is nothing but j omega and it is complex term. So in that manner only I have calculated this magnitude. Like root over over here t is nothing but like you can say you can put s equals to j omega so it's omega t j plus one so with this part square with this part square over here similarly when you put s equals um, s equals to j omega in the denominator you'll get this value as well and when you calculate the phase it is nothing but the tan inverse y by x that you have x plus j y the phase of this particular expression is this so the, the phase of the ts plus 1 is tan inverse omega t and since it is in denominator so when you uh, make it to the numerator over here so this will be minus extra minus will be there so tan inverse alpha omega t so this is the actual phase and this is the magnitude of this compensator okay so these are the important formulas like the first formula says the maximum phase lead occurs at this frequency like the frequency at which uh, the maximum uh, phase lead or lag happens so that is known as 1 upon t root alpha this formula is a standard formula and you just need to substitute the value of t and alpha and you will get the answer directly like the maximum phase lead occurs at which frequency so at this particular omega m the maximum uh, phase lead occurs the alternate expression is also like this omega cz into omega cp these are the corner frequencies of poles in zero and this is also another uh, root over z into p like over here i have mentioned what is the value of z and what is the value of p okay here also the maximum magnitude like what is the uh, gain maximum gain so it is nothing but one upon root alpha this is uh, not in db and this is the value in db over here so when you convert from magnitude into db you will have to put 20 log of that particular quantity so one by root alpha so when you solve it you will get uh, 1 by 2 over here so 2 reduce the 20 by 10 so 10 log 1 by alpha in decibels okay so the maximum phase the value of the maximum phase is 1 minus alpha upon 1 plus alpha this is the maximum phase lead or lag provided by the compensator okay so these three formulas are there these three formulas are very easy and you must remember these formulas while solving while solving questions generally numericals are asked from these particular like what is the uh, maximum frequency at which uh, the maximum phase uh, lead occurs at which frequency and what is the maximum uh, magnitude and what is the maximum uh, phase like these three questions are there and in case if they want a general phase at particular frequency you can directly substitute the value of omega which is given in the question and t you can calculate from the transfer function and alpha you can also calculate from the transfer function so with that you can easily calculate the phase and the magnitude can easily be calculated once you know the omega at particular t value particular alpha value and particular omega value so magnitude and phase both you can calculate at any value of omega and these are the conditional uh, uh, formulas like what is the maximum uh, frequency at which maximum phase lead occurs and uh, what is the maximum uh, gain and what is the maximum phase angle okay so here are the statements these statements are for uh, uh, direct uh, statement based questions so uh, for the lead compensator it is recommended to improve the speed and stability of a system having less noise effect because lead compensator is prone to noise so you have to use a lead compensation in general to improve the speed and stability but these two speed and stability but these two can be improved only when your environment is noise free noise free you can get these desired result in noise free environment because once noise is added to the system uh, the lead compensator is very prone to noise like it will not uh, 
behave good in presence of noise. So the lead compensator is used only when there is a noise free environment. Okay. And this is recommended to improve the speed and stability of the system. Next point is the lag compensation. Over here, lag compensation is, uh, is to reduce the effect of noise. So in case of uh, noisy environment, you can use the lag compensator. And uh, yeah, uh, if the system is having a good speed and stability and in order to reduce the effect of noise, you can use the lag compensator. And yeah, lead lag compensator is recommended to improve the uh, complete response characteristics. As you can see, uh, in lead lag compensation, you can uh, easily manipulate the uh, parameters by by the lead and lag compensator transfer function and uh, uh, the noise and the stability and the speed all these parameters can easily be uh, compensated or easily be handled to get the desired output so in general we use lead lag compensator uh, which is recommended also to improve the complete response characteristics okay at last i want to discuss the implementation of the uh, lead lag compensators uh, by means of uh, circuit diagram so here is the circuit diagram So you can observe over here the circuit diagram. So over here you have one resistance. Over here you have a common capacitor R2 and C2. This is actually uh, the diagram of like circuit diagram implementation of the lead lag compensator. Why this particular circuit is behaving as a lead lag compensator, or you can say lag or lead compensator by looking at the transfer function. Like when you calculate the V naught by Vi, you'll get minus R2 by R1 as R1 C1 plus 1 divided by S R2 C2 plus 1. When you look at this particular transfer function, here, this will be similar to the GC equals to S plus Z divided by S plus P. Okay. So, yeah, by looking at this particular transfer function itself, you can calculate, you can conclude that alpha into R1 onto C1, like over here. This is Over here, this quantity is alpha t and this quantity is t. So, alpha into R1 C1 equals to R2 C2. Like here, you can conclude from this particular transfer function like this. So, when you calculate alpha, it is R2 C2 divided by R1 C1. And uh, yeah, in the both the case, when alpha is less than 1, you can have a lead compensation. And when alpha is greater than 1, you have a lag compensation and these are the conditions for the lead and lag compensation behavior of this particular circuit like over here so this circuit will, will behave even as a lag compensation or a lead compensator when you manipulate this r1 c1 and r2 c2 okay sometimes in exam they ask a few more circuits like um, this capacitor is in parallel with the resistance and here is the r2 and voltage is observed like output is observed across this r2 resistor so this is the lead compensator you must remember this and Exactly, when you find out the V naught by Vi in this case, you will find this particular transfer function in this pattern. Okay, so uh, by changing the value of R1 and R2, you can find a C, you can easily manipulate uh, whether to get the output as a lead compensator for the particular value of alpha, which is less than one. Okay, just remember this circuit, uh, like I can tell you the trick also, since this particular circuit is leading in nature, like it is in the input side so you can say it is a lead compensator and uh, yeah when this capacitor is at the lag like at the end of the like at the output side at the end of the circuit you can say it is a lag compensation this is just a remembrance technique so you can use it and uh, yeah when actually you will find v naught by vi you will get the transfer function and the value of the parameters in such a way that alpha will be greater than one for this particular transfer function and that is the behavior of the lag compensator okay so these two are the transfer functions uh, for the lead and lag compensator and yeah in multiple choice questions they they may ask you like this circuit shows which compensation technique okay or if this circuit is behaving as a which compensator so here are the few questions which you can try so the first question is very easy and uh, with this notes itself you can try all these three questions and you can post your answer and uh, i can provide you the solutions as well for these three uh, questions and yeah you can refer some other study material also like these notes are very short and as we have a limitation of time we cannot exceed to long hour videos so here is the overview of the compensation and uh, compensators so i hope it will be very helpful for your studies yeah so thank you thank you very much and yeah happy learning